your engine line was one of the great pioneers. And almost 100 years ago, he discovered that the blood is not sterile. That's a small statement, but it's a huge, huge discovery. Imagine if you thought the world was flat, how that would change everything. And what would it be like if you uh, got your travel tickets from a travel agent that thought the world was flat? Who knows where you might end up, right? Well, if you thought the blood was sterile and you're treating uh, based on uh, Pasteur's germ theory that everything is due to air germs somewhere outside of the body, imagine how that changes everything. But come to find out, the blood is not only not sterile, but it is the home to many different microbes that live in a symbiosis with us. And based on the pH of the blood, which is their environment, they will either grow and become pathological, or they will remain in their low valent form and be our friend. They are our immune system. And their behavior and their uh, happiness, if you will, is more important than anything because it has to do with uh, whether we get sick, it has to do with the development of degenerative diseases, the development of cancer, and our lifespan. This is a picture of Antoine Béchamp. Antoine Béchamp was the quiet, intelligent chemist doing the studies on fermentation at the same time as Louis Pasteur. They were both trying to see how they could make a better wine for France by studying the uh, intricacies of fermentation. And they ended up finding out that, what do you know, we're part of that fermenting cycle as well. Louis Pasteur concluded that uh, all germs come from outside and that that's what caused fermentation and that the blood itself is a sterile terrain. Whereas Antoine Béchamp proved, he had a dirt the microscope, and he proved that there are many of these microbes and that they do grow and develop. And then Gunther Enderlein built upon his work. You know, when uh, Antoine Béchamp died, there were eight pages of credits and degrees that he had, but he just wasn't as political um, with the courts of France as, as uh, Louis Pasteur was. So unfortunately for the rest of us, we've gone 150 years uh, you know, down this flat earth, come to find out that the blood is not sterile. And so um, you know, we've not been treated properly. There are many, many um, uh, things to understand here. The, the different um, direction that it went is Louis Pasteur's germ theory, his air germ theory, uh, ended up being allopathic medicine, and that is what is taught today. It is still being taught in this country that the blood is sterile, and that there is one germ for every disease, and one disease for every germ. Since the human genome has been decoded, it has been proven that that is impossible. And we don't have enough pairs of genes to host uh, a cause for every single disease. So because of that discovery as well, that begins to prove even further that the development, or what we call the pleomorphic theory, is a much more accurate expression of the process of disease. And disease is a process. It is a process of developing from one phase to the next. It develops. You don't just wake up one day with a cancer tumor. You've been having symptoms and uh, suspicions for a long time that things are not right. It was Antoine Béchamp then that realized that the pH of the blood dictates how the microbes behave. If they grow and become pathological, it is in self-defense because we are force-feeding the microbes a lot of acidity. And knowing this and understanding this, if you continue to allow your pH to become acidic, you're setting the prairie on fire and setting the ground for degenerative and serious disease. So it was then Enderlein was building upon that, uh, where he discovered the different life cycles of the microbes. And that is what we call pleomorphism.